Okay, hi guys. We're going to look over the check your understanding on page 782, all the way in the back of the book. Okay, so hopefully you've read the section and we've talked about um, transforming data in class. Okay, so let's just look at this whole scenario. It is talking about um, life insurance premiums, like how much you have to pay for life insurance um, at certain ages. So, of course, the younger you are, the less you have to pay for life insurance because the probability that you're going to die and claim li the life insurance is lower than when, say, you're 65. Okay, so if we plot this data over here, if we plot this data over here, okay, these are my ages and this is my life insurance premium. Now, we can, le we can put a least squared regression on it, but you'll notice this data is a little more curved. It would probably be better if we did some sort of exponential um, regression, okay? But we're not doing that. We're going to do linear regression, so we're going to force it to be linear. So in the, chap in the section of the book, um, in the section of chapter 12 that you read last night or read before this, there's lots of different ways to transform data. Sometimes you can square root, sometimes you can cube root, sometimes you can square, but we're going to concentrate on taking logarithms or natural logs, okay, because that's all you're going to be responsible for. Um, you're not going to have to actually do that. You're going to have it done for you. You just have to evaluate which um, option is best. Okay, so let's look at our three little options here. It says, you use each model to predict how much a 58-year-old would pay for a, a life insurance policy. So right here is our general scatter plot. We have the age, I'm blocking the light. You got the age as your X and the premium as your Y, your explanatory and your spots. So again, we could put a least square regression line. As a matter of fact, whoops, we have our least square regression line here of premium, predicted premium is negative 343 plus 8.62 times the age, and we have a coefficient of determination 0 0.9, 0 0.90, okay, 90%. But you'll notice our residual has a pattern, so maybe a linear is not the best, not the best, um, best regression to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to natural log all the ages and all the premiums. So when we come over here, we can see that we took the LN, or the natural log of all the ages, and the natural log of all the premiums. Okay, and I'll talk about natural logs in a second. So now you'll notice it's looking a little straighter. Okay, I've got another least squared regression line, not just premium and age, but natural log of premium and natural log of age. Okay, but my residual still, oh wait, the coefficient of determination is getting stronger. Okay, so it's 0.99 as opposed to the 0.9 over here. But my residual still has a pattern, so maybe won't be the best the best um, regression okay then let's see what we did here we did our original age and then we natural log the premium so now it's practically a perfectly straight line as a matter of fact my coefficient of determination is a 1.0 which is very rare I do have a least squared regression line with the natural log of the premium and the original age and if you'll notice my residual is scattered so this would be the best um, fit. This would be the best way to transform our data to get a nice linear fit by using the original age and the natural log of the premium. Okay, so let's come down here and use each mile to predict how much a 58 year old would pay for such a policy. Okay, so option, whoops, oh my gosh, my pen. Option one, we put check your understanding, page 782 to 783. Uh, so, option one, we would have. Predicted premium is negative 343 plus 8.63 times the age. Okay, so if I plug in 58, I would get a predicted premium of 157 point, oops, point 54, $157.54. So that would be my predicted premium of... Um, my life insurance policy for a 58 year old using my straight linear regression, which again isn't the best fit because my residual has a has a distinct pattern. Okay, if we go to option two, I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna write this least squared regression line down. So now I have the natural log of the premium equals negative 12.98 plus 4.416 times the natural log of the age. Okay, so, let's see, I'm gonna write down this stuff to abbreviate. Negative 12.98, I'm gonna take the natural log of 58. 58, yeah, 
Okay. Now, for those of you that had Math 3 STEM, you know what natural log is. It's just a logarithm with a base of E. Doesn't matter. We can put that whole thing in the calculator. So negative 12.98 plus 4.416. I have a button come down my calculator so you can see my natural log button. I have a natural log button, natural log, go back, of 58. And I get this value. So natural log with a premium, 4.9509, okay? So to rewrite that natural log with a base of E as an exponential, okay, to, to solve for premium, I would say E raised to the 4.9509 power equals my predicted premium, okay? So that I can just stick in the calculator. Sorry, my paper's out. So, where's E? Right there. Okay, hold up. Can you show them on the thing? There's my E. So second E. Oh, wait. Zoom out. Try that with. Zoom out. Zoom up. You can't see. Is. I know, but you can't see what I type. To the, I'm just going to grab that power. Okay? So E to that power. So there's my premium. Let's see. $30. $141.30 $30 is the pre predicted premium when I took the natural log of the age and the natural log of the premium. Okay, sorry, my 30 looks like poo. I'm writing on the, the crease of the book. David, go up a second. Watch that, watch that glare, okay? Okay. Option three has, come up here, has the straight age, okay, our plain old X age, and then the premium, excuse me, the natural log of the premium. So let me rewrite that regression equation. So natural log. Oh no, we got to answer to it. <laughs> Negative 0 0.063 plus 0 0.08. I can't read those numbers. Five nine times the age. Okay. So again, to do the math, I am simply going to plug in. I don't have to natural log the age, this is just the straight age. Let me put that in the calculator and I get 4.9192. So again, knowing that the base of a natural log is E, I can solve for the premium as E to the power 4.9192, okay? Let me put all this in the calculator. <clears throat> times 58, okay, so I got that, and then I'm going to do E to that power, okay, so this gives me a premium, a, a predicted premium of 136 point 89, it's 136 bucks and, and 89 cents. the 4.9 uh, E? That? Yeah. I went up and grabbed it, so I can get my <laughs> E, use my arrow, and go up and highlight it, and then hit enter, and it sticks in that little box. Wait a minute. Yeah, there you go. Why retype seconds. anything if you don't have to? I never retype anything that I don't have to. Okay? All right. So this, these are our three different um, predictions for premiums. One's based on straight linear regression. This is uh, natural logging both variables. And this one is natural logging just the response variable. Okay? Which one would you come a little bit so you can see? Which would you rather pay when you're 58 years old? I'd rather pay that. Okay? It's the cheaper amount. Okay. So now it comes back up. Come back up. So now it says, what type of function, linear, power, or exponential, best describes the relationship between age and monthly premium? Well, this one was the linear this one was the linear model because I didn't I didn't um I didn't transform anything. This is the power model because I transform both variables, and this one is the exponential model because I only transformed the response variable, okay? So this is when we're just gonna look at the residuals and look at the R squareds, and we can calculate the Rs. So clearly by the residuals, this one's the best because it's the most scattered. This is a distinct pattern, that's a distinct pattern, so they're not very good. They're not very good for the 
re-expressed or um, transformed linear model. Okay, it's it's linear now, but it was it was forced that way. Okay. Um, plus, if we look at our, our squared, 0 0.9 to 0.99 to one, clearly one is the strongest. Okay, you know R squared is the strongest when it's 100%. Well, this is 100%, which is clearly stronger than 90 or 99%. We could calculate our R's if we wanted to. If we took our square root of 0.9 and 0.99 and 1, clearly the square root of 1 is 1, so that's going to have the strongest correlation. Um, square root of 0.99 is what? 0.995? Pretty strong. Square root of 0 0.90 is 0.949. Again, pretty strong, but nothing's as strong as that. So in this situation, this exponential model would be um, the best way to describe the relationship between age and monthly premium. Okay? Great. See you tomorrow.